Okay, so let's now talk about the cardiovascular disease risk factors. Um, you should be coming into this one having reviewed how circulatory systems work and how atherosclerosis and blood clotting happen. And now we look at the different lifestyle or um, genetic factors that can increase the chance of cardiovascular disease. So what I've got already here is these being the risk factors right here. And what we should understand right from the beginning is that really all these risk factors basically increase the chance of either atherosclerosis or blood clotting occurring. Okay? If though if these if one of these two things happen in a brain artery or an artery in the brain, it's going to result in what we would term as a stroke. So uh, many cells in the brain have a reduced blood supply because of atherosclerosis or blood clotting happening in one of the arteries, and therefore those cells um, stop functioning and it causes uh, a perturbation to the brain function. However, if atherosclerosis or blood clotting happens in a coronary artery, i.e. an artery supplying the heart with uh, oxygenated blood, in that case it's going to result in cardiac cells, heart muscle cells, not having enough oxygen, glucose in order to carry out respiration, and it, then it will be the cardiac tissue that's not functioning, and any disturbance to the heart tissue functioning we would term as a heart attack. Okay, But remember why atherosclerosis and blood clotting cause that to happen. And it goes back to your understanding of the functioning of the cardiovascular system. Okay, So remember that either atherosclerosis or blood clotting is going to cause reduced blood flow. And if you have reduced blood flow, you're going to have reduced concentration gradients and if you have reduced concentration gradient, it's going to reduce the rate of diffusion of oxygen, glucose into cells, and carbon dioxide and other metabolic wastes out of cells. And if that happens, then respiration can't happen efficiently in cells. You don't get enough ATP production and cells stop working. So main point of this discussion is how the risk factors, how these risk factors increase the chance of that happening. So what is, how do we get from there to here? And essentially, essentially, each of these risk factors either causes atherosclerosis or blood clotting to happen. And this is the easiest way to, to understand this, in my opinion. Okay, so let's uh, begin with the main ones. So the most obvious one, for example, is, um, let's begin with obesity, okay? So obesity is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Why? So what's the mechanism by which obesity cause, increases the chance of atherosclerosis or blood clotting? The basic idea is that as if someone is obese, uh, basically that in their energy intake is not matched by their energy usage. And so, as we said before, e excess energy is converted into fats by the liver. Those fats are then uh, uh, transferred, transported to the fat stores as uh, low-density lipoproteins, and therefore um, uh, the person's mass increases. Now, as a person's mass increases, it puts a greater pressure on the cardiovascular system. So more cells need to be supplied with oxygen and, uh, and other nutrients. And, and because of uh, that increased demand, it increases the blood pressure. Okay, so one reason that obesity leads to atherosclerosis is because there's increased blood pressure. Okay, and because of increased blood pressure, there is more damage to the endothelium. So that, that's going to be a common theme here, that a lot of these factors basically go 
basically cause damage to the endothelium because of blood pressure. All right, so obesity causes increased blood pressure. Because of the increased blood pressure, we have damage endothelium in arteries and over a prolonged period of time, then this is going to result in a lot of atherosclerosis happening. Okay, so for this you might want to go back to the video where atherosclerosis was discussed in detail, but remember that one of its major, one of the, the key event in atherosclerosis is damaged endothelium. Okay, so, and the other thing about obesity is that there is likely, because the person's energy intake is higher than their energy use, that means that the liver is going to be converting a lot of this excess energy from the diet into LDLs. Okay, so remember that LDLs then, LDLs, right, absorbed, absorbed by white blood cells. Okay, so remember that in atherosclerosis, the atherome was formed because the white blood cells that um, arrive at the damaged site, they absorb uh, cholesterol and saturated fats from circulating blood LDLs. And if a person is obese, they are much like, more likely to have high levels of LDL in their blood, which then again increases the chances of atherosclerosis or or increases the development of that process. I will warn you, this diagram is probably going to get a little bit complicated, okay? But, key point being that we should understand how these things cause atherosclerosis and blood clotting. Right, um, so let's move on then. So, with age, the link between age an increased chance of atherosclerosis is simply that if um, over time over time there's much more likely to do you're much more likely to develop damaged uh, or, or you're much more likely to get or to develop damaged arteries simply because of time right wear and tear over time okay now if if you are leading a very healthy life and your blood pressure is within normal limits then you're less likely for this to happen but it stands to reason that there's going to be an increased chance over time, increased chance of damage to endothelium. Okay, obviously this is going to be increased if um, your lifestyle fact, uh, choices have not been good. All right, um, gender, now gender Again, gender is linked. I would link that to uh, energy metabolism. So not, not that males or females are like, more like or less likely to be obese, but it's to do with how fat is stored in males versus females. Okay, so I will link this to waste, waste, waist hip ratio okay so the waist to hip ratio so women and men store fat in different places or tend to store fat in slightly different places in their body and it turns out that where men store tend to store fat more than women is around the abdomen and this is associated with an increased chance of cardiovascular disease Okay, high salt, high salt, again, high salt causes high blood pressure. So the more salt you have in your blood, the more solute concentration is in your blood, then this causes more water to enter the blood by osmosis, okay? Right, so the more salt you have, the more solute you have in your blood, and the more solute you have in your blood, therefore, more water comes in by osmosis. And the more water you have in your blood, the higher the blood volume is, and this causes an increase in blood pressure, which, because basically you're trying to fit uh, more stuff in the same 
area in your blood vessels and therefore this increases the chances of blood pressure. Okay, the saturated fat intake is going to, again, that's going to affect the LDL levels in the blood. So the more saturated fat you have in your diet, the more chance you're going to have of having LDLs in your uh, circulation. Okay, and again, the high energy intake is basically the same thing. The more energy you intake in your diet that is not getting used up, the more likely you are to, to have LDLs in your bloodstream. Okay, right, now genetic inheritance. This is an interesting one, but genetic inheritance is basically to do with the variations in the sequences of the lipoproteins. So the protein that we talked about in the LDLs, the protein in the LDL is called apo lipo protein and there is evidence to suggest that differences in the sequences of these apolipoproteins so just like we have slightly different sequences for our genes that we call alleles there are different alleles for apolipoprotein among the human population and it turns out that some of these um, variations are have an increased chance or increase the chance of people developing cardiovascular disease Okay, so again, the apolipoprotein sequence then kind of goes into that. All right, so depending on the sequences that you have for your for the apolipoproteins in your body, uh, it might affect the level of LDL circulating in the blood. Okay, um, right, uh, and I guess also remember, and it's going to get complicated here, that. Of the blood pressure, if there's increased chance of blood pressure, that could also cause blood clotting, okay? Because it exposes damaged endothelium, exposes collagen fibers. And remember that that was the first step of blood clotting, okay? So, antioxidants then. Antioxidants prevent prevent damage, antioxidants prevent damage to the endothelium. So the higher levels of kind of antioxidants you have in your, in your body is supposed to be protective against damage. So it stands to reason that if someone has a diet low in antioxidants, that increases their chance of damage to the endothelium and therefore atherosclerosis and or blood clotting. Stress, stress is nice and easy, stress causes high blood pressure, okay? So stress uh, causes high blood pressure, and high blood pressure is going to cause damage to the endothelium. Um, I hope I don't need to draw the line again, but you can see where that's going, okay? So, I'll just put it here. High blood pressure causes damage to endothelium. Alcohol, alcohol, um, it's basically, it's calorific, okay, so it's got a high calories, i.e. it's energy, it's high energy. So just like other things in your diet, like eating, um, you know, Carbohydrates, for example, a lot of energy. Alcohol is very similar to that. It's got a high energy content and therefore it's very easy to accumulate lots of energy and then not so easy to remove it. Okay, so alcohol causes, alcohol um, increases energy content and therefore is, uh, I guess that would lead to or increased chance of causing obesity. Smoking. Now, smoking's interesting. Smoking does a number of things. So, smoking uh, uh, in the smoke, there is carbon monoxide, okay? So, the incomplete combustion uh, results in carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide binds 
binds to hemoglobin irreversibly. Irreversibly, I should say. Hemoglobin. And carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin and therefore, to transport the same amount of oxygen, blood pressure has to increase. And you increase blood pressure, you increase, you're going to increase the chance of uh, damage to the endothelium. Also, cigarettes contain nicotine, which is inhaled, and nicotine, nicotine increases platelet activation. Okay, so nicotine kind of artificially increases platelet activation, which then increases the chance of blood clots forming. Okay. Nicotine also increases blood pressure. Okay, so it does nicotine does a number of things. Okay, so I hope we're getting the idea that most most of these uh, different factors, either they cause damage to the endothelium, so either they cause increased blood pressure or they are affecting the level of LDL in the blood, or they're affecting the level of damage to the endothelium directly, okay? Or increasing the chance of blood clotting. So I know that the diagram looks a bit complicated, but hopefully you can see that um, each of the risk factors has a, uh, a very direct impact on the development of atherosclerosis and blood clotting. So as long as you, rem you remember those key steps for each one, uh, or at least where in the process of atherosclerosis or blood clotting does, uh, does each of these factors have its kind of input, it should be relatively straightforward. Okay?